thank you for that kind introduction, and thanks for the invitation to come down here. Um, to everybody who did all the hard work, I know there's a lot of thankless uh, work that goes into something like this, and thanks particularly to Peter Kraska, who I, as anyone who's read Lockdown America knows, was incredibly influential on not only just the SWAT chapter, but just the, the general thinking of, uh, that informs that book. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is um, failed states, because it seems that the rise of failed states is actually a place, it's but happens to be something I'm researching for a new book, so I'm kind of beta testing these ideas on you. But it also seems to be a f political phenomenon where criminology or the concerns of criminology and the questions around war and the global war on terror come together quite uh, neatly. So, um, the rise of failed states is primarily. Uh, the domain of writers on the right. Uh, they typically discuss failed states and evoke them as justification for U.S. imperialism, for U.S. intervention. And on the left, there is, in general, uh, a great discomfort with discussing what the state is and what its uh, purposes might be. And so many progressives prefer to simply look away from this problem or simply to condemn the notion of failed states as merely a rhetorical cloak to justify intervention. But having had the opportunity to travel to about half of the countries that are ranked on the uh, index for peace, uh, the Fund for Peace's index of failed states, have been to about you know, half of some of the most failed ones, not the most failed ones, of, or the most failed ones, Somalia. Uh, I, I, I take this, this situation very seriously. And I think that the, the whole spread of social breakdown across large parts of the mid-latitudes of this planet is a new and very, very disturbing problem. So, I mean, you know, I assume you all know what I mean by a failed state, but basically a failed state is a country where there is no rule of law, that all the basic institutions of the state have broken down, taxation, basic education, no real health care, basic infrastructure from roads to postal service has collapsed. I'm talking about places like Somalia, Iraq, <laughs> Afghanistan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea-Bissau, um, and unfortunately many others. Parts of Haiti, uh, the slums of Rio, large parts of Colombia, it seems parts of northern Mexico. And in these places, there's no possibility for progressive politics, uh, very little room for women's rights. And so I think nothing to celebrate from a progressive point of view. Um, f and failed states are basically countries where there is no legitimate, there's no monopoly on the legitimate use of violence because there are essentially no legitimate institutions. It's not the classic Hobbesian war of all against all of individuals, but of communities versus communities. And it's not that there's no social contract in a failed state. It's that there's a fragmentation of social contracts. So you get localized social contracts, localized sovereignty. If you think about Carl Schmitt, the right-wing theorist, the idea that sovereignty is defined by the, the force that can uh, control an emergency situation. Well, that, that sort of power is fragmented. So you have this fragmented sovereignty around families, clans, tribes, trade networks, band of, bands of armed men. You might have governor so-and-so up here, uh, the, the key merchant at the port who bribes the, the, the cops there. Um, so the question that is concerning me lately is why do these states fail? In the popular press it's often implied though not said that it's, uh, you know, it's just the fault of the people who live there. You know? In the discussions around the violence in the eastern Congo, uh, frequently there's no historicization of what's going on there. And so you're left with the impression it's like, well, you know, these people are just savages. That's why they do this. But in fact, you look into it, there's a deep history that links the kind of violence that's going on there with a long process of resource extraction that goes back hundreds of years and continues to this day. So... I want to basically outline a little kind of like theory of fail state failure 
from the left, essentially, uh, and then you know discuss a few uh, case studies. And this also, you know, this is important in terms of the military question, the rise of the military in our society, because it's increasingly one of the points of focus of the Pentagon, particularly in the face of incipient climate change. Uh, there's a number of documents that have come out where the Pentagon, for example, the Pentagon's Office on Net Assessment report on abrupt climate change defines, you know, failed states as the front line where uh, military action will have to be taken in the future because of drought, flood, social dislocation.